All right. So, Blue Black Flash here in Historic with a little bit of a neat twist. So, the Historic Anthologies that we've talked about a little bit are the Pack Rat, our are cards that get injected from older formats directly into the format consistently. And one of those cards that we had uh, in the second Historic Anthology was Pack Rat. This was a major player when it was standard legal alongside Black Devotion things, but it's not really made waves in this format, which I think makes a little bit of sense. Like, this card's power level is largely centered around the ability to Thought Seize, take their answer, and then stick it, and then kind of run away with the game. I think there's actually a really neat use of it in this shell here, so... Pack Rat allows us, when we have this in play, to, like, represent counter spells, but then if they don't play into our counter spell or our flash creature, we then get to discard a card and make a Pack Rat, which are nice. Their considerations for Ashiok over Neutralize, or do we value cycling over having another flash card? Don't put bad cards in your deck because they have synergy. And there's a couple of erasures here on the sideboard as just additional counter spells, but in general, you should just play good cards in your deck rather than playing cards that are underpowered, trying to make your cards that are already good better. So let's go ahead and pop on into some matches here with this one and see how it goes. How does mutate power does work with pack rat if you mutate over it? I don't know the answer to that question. Judge. Didn't, I, didn't you tell me Pack Rat was unplayable like two days ago? I think I think it's a tough sell in this format. Interested to see if we can uh, we can find something different here with this. Is it right to have those reach in the board instead of something more flexible like Draw the Lock? Can you tell me? Okay, can you can you explain to me how a card that hinges on the number of cards that are in the opponent's graveyard as opposed to a card that literally takes anything out of their hand that's not a land is more flexible. Instead of, instead of just using the buzzword, can you be descriptive and explain to me why you feel the way you do? Because I think it's some hot nonsense to describe Drown in the Lock as more flexible than Thought Erasure. People go to their graduations. I have, I have multiple degrees and I've never been to a graduation ceremony. I didn't go to my college graduation. No, they send you the degree in the mail. I was forced to go to mine, and I was really hungover, and there were bagpipes, and I wasn't thrilled about it. <laughs> I think with Brazen Borrower to bounce a potential blocker, I just smack them here and draw two cards, and really try and get ahead while I have a mana advantage. If they bounce this, it's like not a big deal. Sure. You got it. I'm gonna play this now while they're tapped out. Go. Now my stuff can trips. Ashiox erasure, not thought erasure. I think I think Drown in the Lock's unplayable. I think the types of matchups where you want an effect like Drown in the Lock, they tend to have either Uro or um Croxa making making it really terrible. I think Ashiox Erasure, while being kind of expensive, is probably fine against decks like Nexus of Fate and other, other combo decks. I think it's probably worth giving a chance to.
great. And then post board here, we get to have cast downs and heartless acts, which seems great. I think we actually want fewer counter spells and just more things that play to the board here. Do I want Thought Erish? Would I rather have Thought Erisher or Quench here? I think that's actually kind of an interesting decision. I think, I think I'd rather have Thought Erisher than Quench. Obviously, Dispute's great. We're going to keep three of those against the mono blue deck. I feel like, I feel like I'd rather have Discard Spells here. All right, so with 4,100 people in the Red Bull tournament, what are the number of people that actually show up and play? How how high of a no-show rate do you think they can have for a tournament with no entry fee? I feel, I feel like it could be something like 25 plus percent. Yeah, I feel like it could be as high as half. I think, I think 2K don't show up could be realistic. I think especially, especially with the time zone, with the time zone starting at 3 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Central. Like, I think there's like a half no-show rate. It's basically a Facebook event. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking, April. It's, ba it's basically a Facebook event. And then, and then another question is not only how many, how many show up, but then how many lose round one and are just like, nope, done, check it out. Because like, your expected value after you lose round one is abysmal, right? I mean, the EV is abysmal regardless, but it goes from abysmal to even worse once you lose round one, right? Half will drop by round three. I bet it's more than half by round three. I would, I would put money on more than half by round three. I think I actually keep the extra dasher here. Because remember, this is just a threat I can play on its own too. So you can just like end step this and start attacking for two. Here's at... At the risk of Red Bull never offering to work with me, I have a real question. Do people actually drink Red Bull? Like, are there are there real human beings that drink that product? So, like, backstory to this question. Um, when I was sponsored by Tempo Storm, they would send me a case of Red Bull every month. And I literally couldn't give it away. Like, I don't I don't drink energy drinks. And, like, I couldn't give it to people for free. And I, I assume some people drink it. But, like, it must just be people that are, like, not in the circles of people I hang around with. Because, like, I just be like, hey, hey, you want some Red Bull on your way out the door? It's like, nope. I'm too old. Okay. I believe that. I need more teenage friends. Okay, that makes sense. It's a big it's a big thing for it's a big big teenage thing. I mean, my statement is peak boomer. If people, if so many people in their 20s are into, it's a nightclub thing with alcohol. Okay, that makes sense. It's like a mixer. It's like ginger ale. Like some people drink it, but not a lot. Red Bull is better for you than coffee. What's the science on that one? 
I don't drink coffee either. I don't really drink any caffeine personally, so I'm definitely not their target audience. Yeah, I, I feel like coffee's better for you than Red Bull's probably a stretch. What do I drink? I drink uh, water, room temperature water for the most part. Occasionally, I drink fruit juice or unsweetened tea. What a savage. <laughs> I'm also a small child. All of my water bottles have, uh, have a straw in them. I think I'm just gonna play this out now just so they can't like bounce my only thing and counter it because so long as I can keep this at home I feel like we're ahead plain black coffee can actually have health benefits if you're not drinking four cups a day sure don't you also drink cake shakes I have not had takeout in almost two months is it been two months it might be two months I think, I think we've hit the two-month mark. I think we've hit the two-month mark. Days, days since last takeout meal. You don't drink cake shakes. It's a pre-chewed dessert with a straw. <laughs> that's that's so a disgust that's so such a disgustingly accurate description. It's uh, listen, they're delicious, okay? I will definitely have more cake shakes in a post-COVID world. We when we have test and trace widely implemented or a vaccine I will enjoy cake shakes again how's my day going my day's been swell my day's been swell They're bouncing my murderous rider. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Got your third 5-0 in a row with Grixis Luris. Nice, Dwells. Congrats. Uh, Friendo, you just gave me this, Friendo. <laughs> I, I accept your proposal. What do you make of the argument that getting takeout supports local restaurants during a time when they can't get any other customers? 
Um, I think there's lots of industries that are hurting right now. And I think we need to, I think if you want to support your local places, you can support them in a way other, you can buy gift cards. I think you should also be po pushing your local and national representatives to issue legislation. This, this idea that we as individuals all need to do these things rather than depending on the entity that we pay plenty of taxes to doing it is nonsense. The point, the purpose of government is supposed to have, have infrastructure in place during times like this. And times like this really highlight the stunning lack of social safety nets present in the United States. Is there any evidence of COVID spreading from takeout? Every time you are having contact with any other people, you are risking exposure. What you need to understand about COVID-19 is that there are lots of people who exhibit no symptoms who are carrying and spreading the disease. That's why widely available testing is key to being able to test everyone, even people without symptoms, to trace and strategically quarantine instead of quarantining everyone. And again, I would encourage you to get your information from places other than random dude streaming card games on the internet. Hey Jeff, will you be playing much standard in the future? Nope. Nope. Once... Once I finish the standard decks that are currently in my queue, I don't think I'm going to be playing standard much until rotation happens. something new every day you learn you learn something new every day pack rat pack rats do not like to okay mutate under me, mental note mutate under the pack rats Mental, mental note, mutate under pack rat. Got it. Did standard fulfill today's expectations? So standard went exactly as we expected it to go. We played a greedy deck that wasn't Jeskai Luka, and we got thoroughly dumpstered in a not close game by Jeskai Luka. And I decided our deck wasn't worth playing, and I stopped playing it. All right, can I put the octopus under the pack rat this time? Can I put it under the pack rat? No, I'm just going to attack. I'm just going to attack. Under, under works. Yep. I think I just let this happen. It's unfortunate I can't mutate over the top of it. Because if I could mutate over the top of it, it would counter the Devout Decree.
I would be very surprised if that archetype is actually good, LaShawn. I also think the average play pattern in Standard suck enough that I'm not interested in finding out. I think if you're someone interested exploring in Standard and you like the play patterns of Teamer Clover, maybe it's fine, but I don't really have an incentive to play a format that I really hate the play patterns of. Hey, a baseless speculation what's happening with the ban in R on Monday. Yeah, it's super easy. They're going to ban... They're going to ban Companions in... They're going to ban Luris in Legacy and Vintage. I have no idea what they're doing with Brawl because I don't give a shit about Brawl, but they're going to ban Companions in Legacy and Vintage. They're going to ban Draneth Magistrate for Brawl. Okay, sure. Oh, because that stops you from playing your commander, right? Sea Dasher Octopus, just reminding us why it's one of the best things around. It's the best around. No one's ever gonna bring you down. Do 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 Happy with our game. Happy with our sideboard plan. Let's do it. Oh. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what uh, what happens with Historic in terms of popularity once the ladder goes always on. I feel like not having the ladder always on chases away a good chunk of people. I'm going to shock this in so that way we can dispute a search for Ezcanto or a Thought Erasure here. All right. Need a land drop real bad. Unless they play like Tefri here, we're probably cycling neutralize. Yeah, I think I'd rather cycle here. Try and hit my land drop. As you will. So we have to draw like three cards this turn. Huh? Do I just hold up neutralize? They missed a land drop. 
It's a little greedy, but you know, you love to see it. We're on 25 lands. We get two draws here. This card's such gas. Kill you. Yeah, yeah, we check the daily deals. Usually we do that pretty early. I think I want to just try and hit my land drops here. Could be wrong. Uh, this isn't a basic. That's a mismatch basic, though. That's terrifying. Stop those enchantments from hitting the board now. Land drop. Octopus, octopus still growing up, chat. And uh, the Slitherwisps here are actually quite good. They'll help us hit cards and drain them out slowly. The Slitherwisp draws you cards and loses your opponent life. A very good aggressive card in decks like this. Yeah, so far the pack rats haven't done anything. Having, having better mana is a big step up from Blue Black Flash and Standard. The fact that this format's just a little bit different from Standard helps a bit too. Pack Riot lost us a game and did something. Harsh but fair. Hey, Chris and Chill, thanks for the tip. What adjustable height desk do you have? I have an uplift desk, and I would not recommend it. At some point in a post-COVID world, I'm going to be redoing my office and getting a different brand. Half the, half the time I hit the presets on it, and I have to hit them again because they stop working. And a couple times a week, it like fully locks up, and I have to manually reset it. All right, so I 
Yeah, I watched that this morning. Prejudice, the new champions look really good. How much? They're actually one of the cheapest electronic desks on the market. I think mine was like right around 500 bucks, which is still expensive. Like desks are expensive. Yeah, I think I'm just cutting the rats and bringing in the removal. It's like frustrating, but like not frustrating enough to prioritize fixing, to like prioritize replacing it. By the way, um, anybody who's more in the know about this stuff than I am, did NVIDIA ever make their announcement on their 3000 series cards? They were supposed to be announcing something sometime this week, right? Does anybody know when that is? They didn't announce anything related to the 3000 series. Okay. I think I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna pick up a 2800 card then. People were speculating they could be announcing 3000 series, but sounds like that wasn't wasn't what happened. I'm gonna go ahead and do this and let them potentially stick something post combat since I have cast down. This lets me block their soul warden, which is nice. I have no idea, Seth. I haven't played that archetype enough to know. Oh. But it was nice enough to let us know they were going to pump before we blocked, so thanks. Um, I think I'm actually going to let this happen and stick, uh, stick the second Slither Wisp here and then bounce this next turn. August. Yeah, I want to, I want to get an RTX card before the summer, I think. So August isn't going to work for me. Oh, I should have played this in response to the Heliod so they didn't get a counter, right? It's a mistake on my part. What's wrong with people? A lot. A lot is wrong with people. People, people are not okay. For those of you, for those of you that haven't been paying attention to world events recently, people are not okay. So now every flash spell we cast strains them for three and gains us life. That sounds great. The fact that this is like a draw extra cards effect that like drains them, it's so different. Like normally these black draw effects like drain you, right? The fact, the fact that it drains the opponent is real, real good. People submitted HA3 deck list for us. Yeah, there's a couple in there. If you find, if you find, if you look at the deck queue, there's a couple of things that are marked as 
uh, HA3 or waiting for HA3. Great. Let's play pack right. See, this is uh, this should be a pack right deck. Yeah, Fox. Fox has submitted most of the HA3 decks. I mean, and I don't know that like I expect HA3 to have a huge impact on this format. If I'm being honest, a lot of a lot of the cards are like kind of small upgrades or kind of medium. Man, with Blast Zone, pack right's not even good, right? Just like another reason it's not great. So I guess we're not committing to this. And now I couldn't quench, and because I tapped out for this, I couldn't quench their three drop. And let them ramp here, and now they get another chance to play something around my counter spell. Probably Green Black Citadel here. Yeah, it's one of the many exciting historic decks you can find up on my website if you haven't seen it before. Uh, Pack Rat was in Historic Anthology too. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'd play Pack Rat in this deck again. I'm probably gonna board it out. Um, in most of the games that we play, unfortunately, we don't currently have a Historic Ladder, so I cannot make changes to my deck mid set. But like, even even here, right? Like, rather than discarding things to Pack Rat, like playing Slither Wisp and getting that going is just much much better. Thanks, Roller Dude. Hope you're staying safe out there. Pay for draw a card at any cost, chat. At any cost. Backrats tokens are also 2 CMC. And we're dead. Uh, I don't know. So people ask me about substitutions. Uh, I would recommend taking a peek at the Sultai flash deck that you can find up on... My YouTube channel at some point in the historic set. I think, uh, I'm not sure there's a compelling reason to not play the third color in this format. In standard, the mana's not good enough, but between the Triome and Checklands, the Checklands, Checklands, Triome, Shocklands in this format really feels like you have enough, enough tools for playing all those colors of mana. So I'm going to bring in my discard, my counter spells, which from the Murderous Riders, just try and keep their stuff off the board. Impromptu. Thanks for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Frilled Mystic is the big one. Frilled Mystic's an incredible. Mystic Snake's a great card. I'm going to take the Dryad here, and then we'll just plan to counter their more expensive card. I'm going to keep the Neutralize on tap so we can hopefully field them. I 
In fact, there's a, I believe there's a copy of Sultai Flash in the deck queue that we're going to get back to at some point. Oh, a Boreal Grazer. So we'll get to Field of Rune, one of their lands, get Island, cast Spectral Sailor, and then we'll have Neutralize slash Mystic Speed up for next turn. probably fine right is it nah I'm gonna bottom that I think I'd rather just hold up mana from here on out it's just not a competitive card Femble like for like a hundred bucks I'll play anything but like again it's gonna be a it's gonna be a set where I build the deck and I spend most of the set talking about how this deck is worse than the other options we could be playing and it's clunky and it's kind of awkward and like, if you want to do that, I, you know, I'll take your money. But, like, I'm just, I'm letting you know in advance what that card is in these constructed formats. Yeah, yeah, it's a sweet, it's like a sweet EDH card. You can't, you just can't. $100 to play an hour of Minesweeper. My sponsored rate for non-magic games is a minimum of $150 per hour. So for $150, bucks, i will play Minesweeper for an hour on stream, sure. I'll get Declan involved. It'll be fun. That fall under the no crowdfunding rule? Yes. Correct. If you have to ask how much, you probably can't afford it or don't intend to go through with it. There is a roguelike minesweeper out there. Ball. I also, I also don't play any game at that rate either. Minesweeper we could probably make funny as a meme. I frequently, frequently turn down sponsor segments from games that reach out to me that I'm like, this game actually isn't very good or it's not, just like not, not my thing. Which speaking, speaking of segments and turning them down, um, you would not believe however many indie card games you think are out there. Trust me when I tell you the answer is there's way more than that. However, however many you think indie card games exist, there's, there's more of them than that. Should have gotten the counter. Ooh, that's a good thought. I was thinking I wanted to deal and damage them, but yeah, you're right. I totally should have just uh, gotten a counter. Uh, five color Hoden's is a deck that I'll just sit there and talk about how bad it is. So if you really want to spend your money, that one would be a hundred. I don't, I don't, I don't think that archetype is particular. A deck needs to be novel, like the land destruction deck, 
or it needs to potentially be competitive. Those are those are my two things. It either needs to be novel or potentially competitive. No, in fact, uh, Carafe, I believe there's already one of those in the deck queue. I'm pretty sure uh, it was one of the ones Fox added was Maze's End. If I if I recall correctly. The, the Hodens were added to Magic Arena for Cube. They were not added to be a competitive card in Historic. Or a rephrase, if the Hodens were added with the idea that they could potentially be competitive in Historic, who's ever picking the cards needs to be fired. Or at very least moved to another position. Be, I would be incredibly surprised if whoever added that card was like, this is going to be a Historic staple. Yeah, the shrines. shrines. Shrines are not real cards. They they seem completely unplayable because they are. Yeah, Spectral Sailor's real good. Carries, uh, carries a C dash rock to post real nice. This deck, um, the good things about this deck in a lot of the ways, uh, very similar to the mono blue tempo deck we played a little bit of. That was fine, right? Only we've got Slither Wisp and removal spells instead of Curious Obsession. Unfortunately, we don't have an untapped blue here on one, but the rest of the hand is good, so we're going to keep it. Yeah, these lands, Saven. We get to play more dual lands, so we can play double blue and double black cards on three, and actually play magic consistently still. Yeah, there's also there's also fewer Tefries in Historic on average. There's also also fewer Tefries in Historic on average. Which makes this archetype more competitive here. Yeah, that's true. This particular build has four pack rats in the main, but they've been awful. I think I'm just hanging tight and representing a counter spell slash playing Slither Wisp here. Jacob, what's up? How's your day going? Good. good. You being a good kid for mom? Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong, bud? I'm not a good enough. 
What's wrong? What about your brain? Oh, my brain made me funny. Your brain makes you funny? My brain makes me funny, too. I'm so sorry. I don't know why. Hmm. I think we offer the trade on Cutthroat here. And then I think because they didn't block, we just mutate onto here. And then thought erasure post combat. You can watch your show in the basement, bud. Ugh. Well, that was, that's quite the top deck. That's the, that's the risk we were taking there. Can we fade a swamp here for a little bit? If they hit a swamp, this game's probably over. They get to put the scry land into play here too and set the top of their deck up. They scryed top, oh no. Sure, bud. Use the remote. I, I can't play. I can't buy Minecraft soul. I gotta buy the Minecraft soul. Okay, I'm gonna help you. Dad said anyways. I'll be right back. We're gonna play one or two more matches with this. I'm gonna help Jake get set up. Hear me. Death Cloud. Death Cloud would be a sweet one. That's one that a lot of people like. That's a sweet build around. Very, very novel card. Hey, congrats, Kyle. Good luck in the rest of your set. Luris of the Dream Den here. I feel like I'd keep this in the dark against an unknown. But I think I'm mulliganing this here. I feel like I need a threat against Luris. Hey look, we found a use for Pack Rat. Hello, wife. Love you. Yep. How's our daughter treating you this morning? Afternoon? Afternoon? Did Jacob come down here today telling me that he got in trouble? Oh, is that what he was saying? Uh -huh. He was saying his brain was bad. He, because his brain makes him silly and he got in trouble because he had to have a 10 minute video call with his teacher and couldn't pull himself together. Listen, sometimes I can't pull myself together for a 10 minute video call either. I feel, I feel for him. Really Any, anybody else in chat relate? Just can't pull yourself together for that 10 minute video call sometimes.
For the people asking why I didn't play my thing out last turn, they literally have a Wizard's Lightning face up right here. So, any threat I would have played out last turn would have guaranteed died to this Wizard's Lightning. Which doesn't seem like a particularly good exchange for me. I think I just do this in response. Let's get my guaranteed card draw in. Protect the Sailor from the Firebrand. Someone asked why I couldn't just do that in response. Well, if my opponent's playing well, they're not just going to proactively kill my 1-1 one -one there. Yes, opponent appears to be playing Mono Red Luris. Oh, you know what? I should fetch a Swamp there, actually. that probably dead here think I bring in Leyline for their deck. I think it's just like Pack Rats out, cast down Heartless Hacked in. And we really don't have a lot of great tools here for an aggressive matchup like this. These aggro matchups are a place where having access to green cards for things like Nightpack Ambusher are a big deal. Because not only is Nightpack Ambusher a pseudo removal spell because it flashes it and blocks in combat, but it also closes the game out very quickly. So once you've started working towards stabilizing, your opponent doesn't have time to get back into it. Probably dead here starting on four cards. Hey, Kyle Not. Thanks for 31 months. Welcome back.
So, as expected from the start of the video, Pack Rat was pretty thoroughly underwhelming in that set. Um, this card is just, like, not really an appropriate power level for Historic, I don't think. Um, the amount of board presence it generates for the amount of mana that it costs just isn't very good at all. My takeaway from playing this deck, though, is that it's probably worth exploring both straight blue-black and Sultai Flash more. A lot of the good things about this deck were the things that are good against the Mono Blue Tempo with the Mono Blue Tempo deck. So I definitely think there could be merit to having maybe a little bit lower land count and dragging your curve down a bit. So like, for example, the way the Blue Flash deck ex excels is you play... Oh, not Spectral Sailor. What's the other? What's the other one? Drop Pirate. You play Siren Storm Tamer. And you play, you play some Obsessions. And then you could trim a couple of lands out of here. And be, you know, 23. Or maybe even get down to 22 lands with the lower curve. And be a deck that's more interested in Slither Wisp. Um, you'd also be a more full-on Flash deck and less of a Mono Blue Tempo deck, I think. The mana in this format is definitely good enough to play Slither Wisp, Brazen Borrower, and Night Pack Ambusher. So in standard, playing double blue, double black, double green cards really just isn't feasible. But when you add Buddy Lands into the mix alongside Shock Lands and Triomes, you get to a point where your lands are still very consistent. You get to play a lot of really powerful spells. And there's actually a Sultai Flash variation in the deck queue that we're going to get to at some point when we get down there historic queues had a lot of a lot of things churning through it format's been really popular so we're going to get to that at some point too if you're a fan fan of that archetype if you want to see it a little bit sooner you can always use your shillings or dollar dues to bump it up uh all right we've got one more historic deck coming up here today at least when we i'm going to take a quick break so i can brush my teeth and put my invisalign back in when we get back we are going to kick the tires on a Yorvo Lord of Garenberg deck paired uh, paired with some mutate creatures here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick ad roll. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 